Now, the directive to ban 18 foreign universities operating in Nigeria has affected five universities from the United States, six from the United Kingdom, and three Ghanaian tertiary institutions. Also, the Federal Ministry of Education on Tuesday announced the temporary suspension of evaluation and accreditation of degree certificates from the Republic of Benin and Togo. Announcing the ban in a statement published on its website, the National Universities Commission explained that the federal government had not licensed the affected universities and so they had been closed down. In a move to sanitize the education sector, the Ministry of Education said that it was temporarily suspending the evaluation and the accreditation of degree certificates from the Republic of Bene and Togo. Well, that said, we're now joined by our guests. Um, first, we have Dr. Ajison Joseph Isaiah, Country Director, Campus Group Nigeria. Thank you so much, Dr. Isaiah, for joining us. Thank you for having me here. My pleasure. We also have um, Professor Olushegun Kolawale, the Vice Chancellor of Trinity University in Lagos, Nigeria. Thank you so much, Professor Kolawale, for joining us as well. Thank you for having me. Have a good afternoon. Good afternoon to you too. All right, uh, Professor Kolawale, I'm, I'm going to start off with you. What do you think are the root causes of the prevalence of fake university degrees in Nigeria? Why do we have so much uh, fake degrees and fake, you know, the, the issuance of these degrees in Nigeria? So, uh, not too uh, far-fetched. One is the desperation of some lazy, indolent people to have a um, certificate they have no hand. That, that's one of the reasons. Because if, the, if genuinely they wish to have such degrees and certificates, there are institutions that have been recognized by government. So I see the people who are patronized, uh, who are desperately looking for certificates as people who are lazy, who are not uh, you know, adding value to, to the system. Number two, I also want to see from the economic uh, perspective, the institutions that are making the, themselves available for such a uh, the business, they're looking for money, uh, means of obtaining you know, certificates, so they make themselves available because of the monetary implication. So both ways, it is for some irresponsible behavior on the part of those who uh, decide to patronize those institutions, uh, and then those who are also making money out of it because they feel that everybody wants to get certificates, so they make themselves available. So because they want to profit from it, those are the two basic factors that I think are responsible for the the, the, the development. Right. And um, uh, Dr. Isaiah, what measures do you think can be taken to identify and eliminate these fake degree meals? I mean. If it weren't for the investigative report that you know uncovered this one, it probably would have still gone on for a long time. So, what measures can be used to identify these fake degree meals? Oh, thank you, blessing. Uh, it's very important for you to know that the primary reason for education is be, is for people to be equipped with skills and knowledge to be to become better in their uh, economic and physical lives as well as uh, relationship lives. And having the government in place is the reason um, the particular society can, can do well. Well, let me take it from the responsibility of the government, because when you look at the definition of government, government simply means the body of the persons that make law, execute law, and adjudicate law for the people of a particular society. So it is not wrong for educational institution uh to be prevalent in various places in the country however uh regulating such institutions to ensure that they are delivering the standard of education that will make the people of the state better and contribute positively to the advancement of society is what uh should be emphasized however looking at the situation we found ourselves if you remember it was then uh at, it was an era of uh, part-time centers in different parts of the country. Then the NUC came and clamped on it, and now everybody returned back to their own university site. But now, uh, the quest to have, and the, the, the quest, and also the desperation to have university certification in order to have a better economic power has now led to 
various individuals seeking affiliation with foreign universities into the country without accreditation in order for them to make um, money for themselves first because money is a major, major drive which is profiting. Then secondly, they did not care about the processes. Now, in order for government uh, to ensure that this never happens again, every university uh, institution, whether direct or indirect, coming to the country should get licensing, not just licensing, they should also be monitored by the relevant uh, regulatory body, just like NUC, because NUC have the basic responsibility to carry out that investigation, not that journalists who did the job. They, they, they can't deny the fact that this has not been in place and they don't know about it, but they're just waiting for someone to, to blow the whistle before they come on this university, which uh, from my own point of view, I think the regulatory body NUC has not done well. There are different departments in NUC, different uh, uh, directorates, which are supposed to be responsible going around to check these bodies. And a lot of people are coming in to different workplaces and applying for NYSC and they're seeing all these certificates and they do nothing to probe them and to ask questions about where did you get this from? How did you get this? What the duration of the program? Now, another thing that the government ought to do is to ensure that they sanction uh, the university directly from their headquarters and not just from the Nigerian soil. Because you can't just come set up a, a system in Nigeria without getting an approval from the Nigerian government, educational ministry. Uh, education ministry. Uh, this is uh, a content of the country and it should be checked uh, vigorously by the NUC. I think NUC should up their game rather than uh, focusing on the minor, of, that is to say majoring on the minor and minoring on the major, because once the educational system is bastardized, the rest assured that our reputation in the international community would drop. And why we are where we are today is because our government NUC is doing what it can uh, in the best possible way to ensure that the university is sanitized. But Following the questions that you have just asked, how did, can this be climbed down? Uh, licensing from the international uh, university that are coming in uh, to set up centers in Nigeria must be followed with due processes. Government should uh, make deterrence those that, were, that are culpable of this crime. And also students that have certificate from such university should not be recognized. Nobody claims ignorance before the law. And we have a good number of universities in Nigeria that we can have a certification. But I wonder why people go to some country and have six months degree and come into Nigeria and they want to use the same degree. And this was what uh, 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 this was what accounts for why people say there are so many graduates out there, but they could not defend their certificate. Those who actually study could defend their certificate, but few are though are, are much more than those are those who have bought who, who bought certificates and could not prove it. All right, uh, and Dr. Um, Dr. Isaiah, I, I really want to butt in here. I'm talking about, you know, comparing students who get certificates for uh, after six months and those who actually get the original ones. Uh, what impact will the suspension of degree certificate uh, evaluation from these universities have on the students of Nigeria who have, or students in Nigeria, who have obtained legitimate degrees from these countries? No, it's so simple. The less, uh, the more, the, the moment you flush out improper certification from the system, will be level, level, uh, level playing uh, individual who have proper certificates from their own country. Now, the grant, the, the labor market will not be left with uh, the survival of the fittest, those who are most qualified with their skills. Of course, when you look at uh, the degree of uh, certification, we have a first class, second class, third class. Some university, uh, some company. Uh, employ based on the class, why some employ based on the skills. So if you flush out students with fake certificates, we have more rooms for those who have the quality certificates to apply for jobs and to secure jobs. Uh, let me tell you the truth about this. So I'm in the, into the international education recruitment business, and I can tell you that even from our own end as agents so over 100 UK university, US, Canada, and Australia university. We do the job that NUC is supposed to do. We identify fixed certificates and advise the university accordingly. And these are the things we expect that NUC should be doing. NUC are thrown off caution. They are not accessible. 
there is no there is no people i cannot say per se but i'm thinking that there are no people that are dedicated to verifying to, to verification from school abroad as to what certificates are accepted or accredited in nigeria but from our point uh, from our own position as the agent to most of these universities we help to verify to check even with nuc and some university to confirm if certificates that were presented to ROS to process admission for students are actually originous. And most of these foreign universities are doing the best they can. Now, when I look at those of some of the UK universities that were mentioned in the reports, these are universities that most of them didn't even get uh, the UK via accreditation to recruit international students. And this is uh, a concern. I wonder how people went there and brought in this university into the country and start recruiting. Because before you say a university is offering some standard certification, then you should have checked with the university directly if they have a base or check with the UK Educational Ministry to see if they have a base. The same with other countries, and that is just it. But for that of Benin Republic, uh, our, primarily we know that their degree program are done for three years, which most UK universities don't accept their degree program for direct masters. They only accept them for either a top up program or, or a postgraduate, I mean, a, a, a pre master's program. However, they come in here, get accreditation, and going for um, what do you call it, uh, NYSC, and they are rated as being equal with our own certification. So, going back to what you have asked, flushing our fixed certificates will only give our own students who have quality certificates opportunity to take. The opportunity in the labor market and do well. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Dr. Isaiah. Now, uh, coming back to Professor Kolaoli, is there any possibility at all or by slim margin that some of these students do not um, intentionally get these certificates from these schools? Maybe they go there with the intention of getting an actual certificate and then they realize that maybe, uh, you know, the, the schedule or curriculum is shorter than usual and then they just get it. And if there are, then what support systems can be put in place for those students? Well, thank you so much. Um, you remember that at the beginning I said such institutions uh, are profiting from students who are desperate, who are willing to cut corners to obtain what ordinarily they would not have been able to obtain if they were to go through the normal uh, university. All right. Um, um, Dr. Kolao, um, Professor Kolaoli, apologies. Uh, we're having a little bit of problems with your audio. Uh, we're hoping that that can get fixed. But in the meantime, let me come back to um, Dr. Isaiah. I don't know if you got the question or would you like me to repeat myself? Please can you repeat it again? All right, so I'm just saying that basically there probably are some students who went to these schools, for example, in Benary Public, and then they wanted to get like the authentic certificates, but they found out that the curriculum was shorter, the certificates were issued in you know fewer within a, a fewer time frame. But so I'm just basically asking if there is a possibility that some of these students unknowingly get these certificates from um, these schools, and if they are, what support systems are provided for them? Sure, uh, I can I will not rule out the fact that some were innocent. Uh, they were with good intention to get uh, a good certificate, a uh, quality certificate, maybe based on the fact that they were denied um, admissions in Nigeria, or they just want the kind of system wherein they will be able to run their program with lesser tuition fees and also with um, quicker, uh, with, with uninterrupted study time. Unlike we have in Nigeria, we have a lot of strike actions and the like in the strike action with universities and the likes of it. So some a lot of a quite number of them should be innocent of uh the quadmire they found themselves. However, uh just to help them out in the whole process is just to advise them to take a proper university because the stigma is gonna be on their certification continuously. Since the government has raised an eyebrow on uh, their certification when they apply to some good companies for a job, uh, it might affect them. And like I always say, my personal slogan, I'm never afraid to start afresh. 
and there is no age limit to going back to school. So there are a lot of schools I, they, can, they can fall back on. We have the National Open University of Nigeria, which has made admission so easy, so fine. They have a foundational knowledge, they study what they want to study, but their certificate is just not accepted. They could pick up a program with a school like National Open Universities and run their programs, and that will give them a better advantage. Uh, to become better in their career path because it's just a matter of four years and they are better done. So if you're not advocating, if you say we should advocate for the fact that oh government should uh, lift this ban on this certificate and start the ban on a fresh set of people, see, stigma is just stigma. You can't take it out of it. Once a university is stigmatized, just like a bank, if once the federal government raise, raise an eyebrow on a bank or there is there is a, a king's report about a bank. You should be rest assured that a lot of people are going to withdraw their money from the bank. So so that's how it is with education. So they should go back, uh, uh, take the courage, and put in for a more proper uh, program in a proper university so they can do well uh, in their career path since they're still young and they can do better. That's what I have to say here. And uh, what implications do you think there are to this, you know, like having this um, kind of situation uh, and having to fish out the schools that are issuing fake licenses from other countries? How do you think this will affect um, the relationships between both countries? Well, it is not about the relationship between both countries. It's much more about what image are we are those country uh making for themselves and I, I want to be sure that when you check with those countries governments themselves they are quite aware of this uh situation and i want to believe that measures also have been given because you can't just go start recruiting international students or going to set up campuses in all the school without your own ministry of education being aware of it you know where where there is lawlessness you expect a lot of things to happen in such country. And this is common with African countries, countries a lot. And aside from uh, the fact that we have some, some of the UK and, the U, uh, and some of the US university, it's also good for you to check uh, with the, for US, check with the um, Minister of Education there to know even if those universities are accredited, because there are a lot of universities, there are some universities that are just online universities and there are some universities that are accredited. We have a couple of them. Some are not um, accredited. They are not uh, approved by the Ministry of Education, but they are allowed to run so as to give every individual who wants to study opportunity to study. So, but for the relationship between Nigeria and those countries, it's not going to hamper anything because no country wants to produce half-baked uh, graduates. And your graduates is a representation of your country image wherever they appear. Let me give you instances of what happens to me. My first degree was done in Ambrose Ali University, EPOMA. So when I graduated from EPOMA, I went to apply to a particular uh, organization. Uh, after my interview, I met with the board, I met with the chairman, and they were so impressed with my interview. Then the chairman said something. He said, you know what, Joseph? People that graduate from your school and have not been doing well, we've been, we've been employing them in this organization and they've been messing up. Then I told them, I said, try me and see if what I've learned from the university is not going to be applied and giving this organization a great success in their uh, pursuit. And within one month or two months, the chairman called me back to his office and said, you know what, I think you're doing well. I think your school is good. Then I made the chairman understand something I said. The university does not make the student, the student makes the university. So you cannot say all students that graduate from Unilag are excellent students, no. So it's all about how you allow the university system to pass through you. So the university system passed through me. I was able to deliver at workplace. And as a result of that, a lot of students that graduate from my university were employed in that university simply because I did well. All so, right, um, Dr. Isaiah, yeah. very quickly, uh, I, I would like for us to take a look at um, making use of technology to combat this recent problem. What role do you think that um, technology and di digital verification can play in preventing this from happening further? We're talking about digital verification. It's so simple. A lot of UK University currently does uh, 
well, they have a center in Lagos, in Nigeria, precisely like British Council. Uh, when the students submit documents that they think are not uh, effective, uh, they, they are not convincing enough, they ask them to take it to British Council for verification. But now, talking about the digital aspect of it, a lot of things are online. We know the situation that our president uh, was in uh, as regarding his um, certification. So, in order to verify this, you cannot but just have access to the university site, the, the main university site, and having them sign you up as a university itself, so that whatever you're getting from a particular university, you'll be able to check with them to confirm if this is actually coming from them or not. Because the data uh, world has actually simplified the whole processes because the aspect of it that I would definitely speak about it, just how you can verify if what you're getting, the certification you are getting from a particular university is actually from that university. A lot of our universities are doing it here in Nigeria. When students study their certificate abroad, you see them sending the certificate, I mean, copy and mail to the university in Nigeria. Please kindly confirm if this certificate is authentic and it's from you. And the university goes about to check the student record and confirm with the university that, oh, this is actually our student, he finished from here. And it's actually from the competition point of view. But if you're trying to say, checking using the software to check if this uh, certification is actually from a particular university, be rest assured that you're gonna get a lot of fraud coming up from there because we have a lot of tech experts that can do anything and do anything and do anything and ensure that you cannot verify anything. Right. Another thing, one of the way to also check is also through the students. Uh, interview session have always helped uh, a lot of employer and some school to know if a student actually uh, graduated from the course they claim they graduate from because okay. basic questions on those okay. courses are asked. All right. Um, I want to use this medium to say thank you, uh, Dr. Ajison Joseph Isaiah, the county uh, or country director for Campus Group Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your quarter. And we really do hope that we do not have a repeat of these kind of situations um, going further. Thank you once again. Thank you for having me and thank you uh, for making Nigeria a better place. My pleasure.